We're going to have a talk about the GD30, the Yoshitake GD30 pressure reducing valve, um, which I like to call the baby brother of the uh, Yoshitake GP2000 and the GP1000, which we've spoken about in earlier videos. This particular um, PRV is a direct acting PRV, and I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on that here shortly. Um, it has a bellows inside, um, which uh, helps it to operate, and I'll explain that a little bit later on as well. It doesn't have a, a pilot. It doesn't have a diaphragm like the other uh, bigger versions, the GP2000 and 1000, uh, but it does have an internal sense port for sensing the downstream pressure, and that is incorporated with inside the, uh, the body of the valve. Um, as you can see, this is a half inch unit. It's quite compact fits into small spaces um, and uh, obviously flow rates uh, uh, are comparably low compared to the larger valves, but it has a place within certain applications. As I said before, it's, it's a direct acting unit. Uh, by that, I mean there's a bellows inside the little uh, body. This little green area here is a, a bellows. It's made of phosphor bronze um, and attached to that bellows is a push rod and a valve. There is a spring, like all PRVs, um, uh, on top, which it can be adjusted, and that's usually adjustable. In this case, it's adjusted by lifting the, the uh, red knob and turning it uh, in, the, in whichever direction you need it to go. Now, the spring tension uh, pushes down onto the, onto the bellows, and as it pushes down onto the bellows, it pushes the little spindle here down and pushes the little valve here off the valve seat, allowing steam coming in through here to flow through into the downstream uh, pipe, pipe work. Um, the, the diaphragm is basically there to, to balance out the, uh, the forces within the, the valve uh, with the spring on top give it some sort of decent control um, and it's a, it's a phosphor bronze convoluted type bellows uh, and this little spindle here is severed from the actual bellows uh, which also helps in uh, avoiding it binding up etc. <clears throat> now once the, the steam flows through the, uh, the, this valve here um, and starts heading towards the downstream side, just like the other pressure reducing valves that you might use. There's a little sense port, uh, which is uh, our internal sense line, and it starts to sense the downstream pressure. That downstream pressure then finds its way up underneath the bellows and around the bellows, uh, forming a, a bit of a barrier actually and protection to the, to the bellows and holding everything together and sturdy. Uh, and um, opposes the force of the spring tension, which has been applied by screwing the uh, adjusting knob uh, in the correct direction. So once it's done that, your downstream pressure has been adjusted depending on, on what you want it to be set to, um, and you would usually use a, obviously need to use a pressure gauge downstream for that purpose. So it has an internal sense port like the, the bigger boys. Um, it has reasonable flow rates um, for its size to suit uh, the application that you might want to use it on. The turn down is only 10 to 1 in this case, but still uh, relatively good. Uh, not many other PRVs have um, 20 to 1 turn down like the GP2000. Most of them are around the 10 to 1 turn down anyway. Um, still does the job fine. Um, three spring ranges in this case uh, between 0.2 and 1 bar, 0.5 and 4 bar, and 3.5 and 10 bar. So if you're operating at a, at a set pressure somewhere between one of these ranges, you need to ensure you have the correct spring installed in the valve. Maximum operating pressure of this particular valve is 1700 kPa, which is you know, a good medium pressure. Um, it can be used on steam, compressed air, and other non-corrosive gases. So it is a little bit versatile in its, its use. It has a bronze body um, with stainless steel seat and trim. Compact, 
and uh, and low cost. Uh, it's it's actually a very very good valve for many many applications. It's good for medium pressure, light duty applications uh, where there's low flows um, and the the pressure you know isn't going to fluctuate uh, widely because of uh, you know. Uh, extreme demands, high and low demands, peaks and troughs. It's good under steady load conditions. Uh, perfect in uh, some applications in food and bed. Okay for HVAC applications where you might have low pressure humidifiers that usually operate around about the 100, 200 kVA. There's some applications for it in tire manufacturing, the timber industry for laminating timber, etc. Um, small commercial laundries and small commercial kitchens are quite suitable for those sorts of applications. Um, anywhere where you might be trying to heat a, a fluid in a tank, like a, a plating plant, um, or heating hot water using a steam to water heat exchanger that may require a low pressure uh, steam supply, but uh, at, at only low quantities, then uh, perfect for that. We can use them on condensate recovery pumps. Um, they're usually a mechanical pump that needs a motive force to, to operate the pump. Um, and steam is one of those applications, or, or even compressed air. You can use the uh, GD30 for that. Hospital sterilizers, we can use them um, on hospital sterilizers and other disinfection type equipment, etc. Wide and varied applications for them, um, suitable for a lot of applications, but they're not um, not for critical applications, I wouldn't suggest. You'd be better off using probably something like the GP2000 um, for that process.